Hello everyone, welcome to the Children's Liturgy videos. We are delighted to uh, welcome you to listen to the Gospel. And today the Gospel is going to be rather difficult to understand. And that's actually quite good because it will be challenging. So with the help of the Holy Spirit, we can meet any challenge. So I'm going to invite you to join me to ask the Holy Spirit to help us to make sense to the gospel that Jesus tells us today. So let's pray to him. Come, Holy Spirit, come and fill our hearts and minds. Come, Holy Spirit. Lord, open my mind and my lips and my heart to receive and proclaim your word. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Jesus said to the chief priests and elders of the people, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a feast for his son's wedding. He sent his servants to call those who had been invited, but they would not come. Next, he sent some more servants. Tell those who have been invited, he said, but I have my banquet all prepared. My oxen and fattened, fatted cattle have been slaughtered. Everything is ready. Come to the wedding. But they were not interested. One went off to his farm, another to his business, and the rest seized his servants, maltreated them, and killed them. The king was furious. He dispatched his troops, destroyed those murderers, and burnt their town. Then he said to his servants, The wedding is ready, but as those who were invited proved to be unworthy, go to the crossroads in the town and invite everyone you can find to the wedding. So these servants went out onto the roads and collected together everyone they could find, bad and good alike and the wedding hall was filled with guests. So in this gospel, we have a very difficult situation to deal with because those who refuse to come to the wedding eventually end up being slaughtered by the king. Now, does this mean that if we understand the king to be God, that we're really in trouble when, he, when we don't do what he wants us to do. So you have the story, the king has prepared everything and is inviting those people. Now, he's not killing them all at once when the first time they say no. They begin to say no, and so he starts again, he sends more servants to invite them. Then they say no again the second time, they're not interested. And then they decide to kill the servants. So the invited guests, who the reluctant invited, the people who are invited and don't want to come, they're already a bit nasty themselves. But then the king gets furious and he destroys everybody. So that's a really strange story. And then he invites everyone he can find, people that he doesn't know, people that, you know, are not really... They don't know what's going on, but they've just been invited and they go and they, they have a wonderful time. So what is this about? What is Jesus trying to confuse us with this weird story where people end up killing each other? This is not good. Killing is not good. So what's going on? Well, I think there's something very, very profound about this. And we need to remember, first of all, it's just a story. So it's not something to be applied literally, but that's how God is. But there's something very true in it. What would be the truth in that story that we can take for ourselves? Well, the truth, if we were to compare the wedding feast to what God gives us, what God wants for us, God wants the absolute best for us. 
And you know, there's nothing like a wedding feast when everybody has the time of their lives. It's the absolute best, where you are with all the people you love, all your friends and families, and you have the best time, the best food, the best music, the best company, because everyone loves each other at a wedding, normally. So God, because and, and because it's the wedding of the king's son, it's going to be the best wedding of that's ever happened. Now, God wants the best for us. And sometimes we don't really see that as the best for us. So we're kind of not interested. We think there's something better we can, you know, oh, I'm too busy. I've got work to do. Oh, um, you know, I'm not, I'm not, in, I'm, you know, it's going to be boring. Um, oh, um, you know, there's, there's things that I want and I desire that I think are much more attractive than what God is giving me. And, you know, when we do that, when we, Forget what God is inviting us to, what he's giving us. And we think we can get something better. It's not that God is going to destroy us. It's that we are destroying ourselves. Because we're choosing something that's just not as good. And we're spending all our life chasing after something that's just not as good. And we end up completely forgetting what God offers us, which is better than anything else. So what is it that God offers us? Well, he offers us his love and his friendship. He offers us his healing, his salvation. He offers us himself in his son. And you know that wedding feast is like Sunday Mass. Now you would think, oh, Sunday Mass can be really boring. And it's true to some extent it's not as entertaining as a normal wedding. You know, you might not like the music. Uh, the company might be a bit boring. Um, but it's not about that, really. Maybe it's not as entertaining. But it's still the best. Because what happens at Mass? At Mass, God invites us to receive himself in Jesus. God gives us the fullness of his love and he gives, the, he gives us the best food that we can ever have because it's not the food of our body, it's the food of our soul, it's the food of eternal life. And so we get the best. Now, like those wedding guests, sometimes we might not realize that this is actually the best, that we can never have. We forget, we don't pay attention, we don't realize how much of a gift God gives us. And if we were to turn away from him, that's where we begin to, well, to lose our own life, to destroy ourselves. Because when you stop eating, you die. And when your soul is, stops being fed, with the food of eternal life, which is Jesus himself, we die. Because we cut ourselves off from the one who gives us life. And what we have in here is the invitation of God. God constantly, constantly invites us. And he will do that every day of our life. He will invite us to receive the fullness of his love, to come to the wedding, come to the wedding. Now, whose wedding is it? Well, it's the wedding of God with humanity. It's the wedding of Jesus with us. That's what communion means, to be one with. So, it's, it's as it were, you know, something very, very mysterious that God wants to invite us to enter into. The kind of love that he has for us is infinite. And when we come to the wedding, when we come to Mass, we receive something of that love every time, and every time we are transformed by that love. And so let's turn to the Lord and thank him 
for his gift. Lord, thank you for inviting me, for inviting everyone to the wedding. Thank you for inviting everyone to receive you, to receive your gifts, to receive everything that you want to give us. Help us to be attentive to your invitation. Help us never to refuse your invitation. Because unless we receive what you want to give us, we'll end up being separated from you. Jesus, keep us close to you always. Keep us close to you and help us to understand and realize what happens at Mass. That treasure, that wedding banquet that you invite us to. To enjoy everything that you want to give us. And to find each time the fullness of your love in there. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Thank you.